In this video, I'll show you how you can create a multiple choice question using pictures instead of text. Okay, so I've done this video before, but I realized that it's probably been about four or five years since I've created this video, and it would have been for an older version of Adobe Captivate, and I thought it was time to update this and give it a modern look and feel and share with you how I would create this interaction today. So obviously sometimes the regular question slides that are built into Adobe Captivate are just not appropriate for certain questions. Here's an example. In this case, we need someone to visually identify an object rather than words that you would typically use with a multiple choice question. So this is what I've done. I've brought in these objects um, as images onto the slide here. I've gone ahead and set them up to be used as a button. So that was the first thing that I did. Now I went into state view and because when you add uh, use as button, you of course uh, add a rollover and a down state. I've deleted those. You don't have to. I just prefer not to have rollover and down states. In this case here, I've created two versions of the image. The first image, which is the normal state of the image, is grayscale. And the second version, which I'm calling selected, has color. It's kind of hard to see with the volleyball. Let's take a look at the basketball. That's a more uh, distinct um, difference between the two states here. So again, grayscale in normal and the selected state will be full color. So that's the first thing that you need to do. Uh, we have a submit button. Currently there's just the continue right there, but we'll assign an appropriate advanced action. And we have a next button and the next button is made not visible in output. So you don't see the next button. And my intention is to hide the next button until the learner gets this question correct. Now we need to convey some messages to the learner as well. And I have a multi-state object, which is simply a feedback caption down here. It's just a text caption. And I've created additional states for those. So the default state or the normal state is just blank. It's just uh, no text whatsoever. There's a correct state where we say correct. That is a baseball, press next to continue. And we have an incorrect where we're asking them to try again. And if they don't make a selection and press the submit button, we want to say, please make a selection before pressing submit. So let's start to build the interaction that goes behind this particular question slide here. So the first thing we need to do is write an advanced action for each of the selections of our items. The good news is I can write the first one and then duplicate it and make a couple of small changes to the remaining items. So let's start off with the volleyball. I've labeled all these objects accordingly, volleyball, basketball, baseball, and football, okay? We are going to need a variable for each one of our objects here. So let's start by adding some variables to our Captivate project here. So we'll click on the project drop-down menu and select variables and we'll click on add new. Now I like to start my variables with an underscore. Uh, that way they're all grouped together. When I look at a list of all my variables, they'll all be side by side because they'll be alphabetized. But it's also a way to make sure that I don't use the same name as any object names as well here. So the first one is volleyball. We'll save that. Underscore basketball, save underscore baseball, which will be our correct answer, and underscore football. I'm not assigning an initial value. I could give them a value of zero. Uh, it's just important that they not have a value of one until they've pressed one of these buttons there. So I can go ahead and close the variables window. And like I said, we're gonna start by writing the advanced action for volleyball. We'll make a few small changes for the remaining buttons and then we just need to write our submit advanced action. So let's go into project advanced actions. And the first one here will be called volleyball. And what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, assign 
the volleyball variable with a literal value of one. I'm going to copy this to save myself some time here and paste it three more times. And we'll change the second one to basketball and we'll give it an initial value of zero. We'll do the same thing for baseball. We will also assign it zero and football. The reason we're doing this is that this could be a second attempt and I don't want to leave a previous value of one in one of these objects. You'll see that in a little bit there. So we're ensuring that only one item is selected. The other three go back to zero in case I've already selected them. Now we want to change the appearance of the actual image buttons as well. So we're going to change the state. Remember, I created additional states for the objects on screen. So let's again do these in order. Volleyball will be selected in this case. And we can cheat a little bit here and paste that in three more times and just change which object we're working with. So the second one will be basketball and we're returning it to normal because perhaps it was already selected before, but we're now selecting volleyball. And we'll do the same thing for baseball. That's going to go back to normal and football back to normal. Okay. Now, if someone has submitted uh, a, an attempt already, the feedback caption will be left on whatever that feedback was, the try again or incomplete. So we want to actually change the state of our feedback caption back to normal because we're essentially resetting this interaction every time we make another choice. So this is perfect. Uh, we can save this as an action, click OK, and Rather than writing a very similar advanced action for our other three images, we can actually duplicate this and we will call this basketball. That's the second of my uh, items on my screen here. And we'll just change volleyball to zero and basketball to one. Similarly, we will change volleyball's object to normal and the basketball image to selected. So we can update this action and we now have two advanced actions. Let's do the baseball one now. So we'll duplicate basketball and we'll just call this baseball. We'll return basketball to a value of zero and baseball we'll give it a value of one. The button itself will return the basketball button back to normal and baseball to select it. Update action, click OK, and we'll duplicate this one more time for football. So again, we'll put baseball's variable back to zero and assign football a literal value of one change the baseball object back to normal and we'll make football look selected. So we'll update that action, click OK and close. So now we can select our volleyball, go to the actions tab and execute advanced actions and make sure that we're pointing to the volleyball script. Same thing here, execute advanced actions. That's going to be basketball execute advanced actions, baseball, and execute advanced actions, football. Perfect. I've also set the hand cursor and disabled the click sound, just something I prefer to do with my buttons inside Adobe Captivate. So next we need to write our submit advanced action. So let's go into the project dropdown menu and select advanced actions. And we'll simply call this script submit, but you can call it whatever you wish. 
So there are multiple decision tabs or multiple conditions that we're going to run into. So what we're going to take advantage of is that we can have multiple advanced actions within one advanced action. The first one we're going to look at is when the situation is completely incorrect. So we'll type in incorrect up here just as a reminder. And we will set this to be a conditional advanced action by selecting the conditional tab. And we're going to look and say if baseball, because baseball is the correct answer, if baseball is equal to the literal value of zero. Alternatively, you could say if baseball is not equal to one, that's the same thing in this case. We're going to change the state of our feedback caption to incorrect try again. Now let's duplicate this decision tab. And this will now be another tab here that we will call correct. And it's just the opposite situation. So if baseball is equal to the literal value of one, obviously we're going to change the feedback caption to correct. Now we also want to do something else when it's correct. We also want to show our previously hidden next button. So we want to make that available and allow learners to be able to move forward. You can also disable all the buttons on the slide. Uh, I'm not going to do that in this case here, but you could disable the submit button. You could disable the volleyball button. And that way, once they get it correct, they can't make any changes. Let's duplicate this once more. And in this case here, we're going to do um, one more version of this script, but this time we're going to look at all of the variables and we're just going to see if they are all equal to zero. So I'm going to copy this first one, paste it in three more times, and we'll just change which variable we're looking at here. So baseball, basketball, football, and volleyball. So if they're all equal to zero, I haven't made a selection. And we're going to change the feedback caption to incomplete. And here I'm just going to get rid of the next button here by pressing this remove icon. So this should be fine. Let's give this a proper label here, uh, incomplete in this case. And we can save this as an action. Click OK and click Close. Let's make sure our next button is not visible in output. Our feedback captions are there. And our submit button is assigned that advanced action we just finished writing. So it's called Submit. Let's test this out and see how it works. OK, so here's our question. We have our balls on the screen. Let's uh, not make a selection and see what happens when I press Submit. Please make a selection before pressing Submit. Perfect. That's exactly what we need to see. Let's choose a wrong answer. We'll choose the basketball. Notice the feedback went away now that I've made a selection. Now we'll hit Submit. Incorrect. Try again. We'll choose the football. The basketball goes back to its default state and the, the football becomes selected. Also incorrect. Let's try the baseball now. Submit. Correct. I can go next. And of course, I'll continue with the rest of my project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.